guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you've all been doing well. Who have been messaging me and asking me for more book recommendations. Since you guys are such bookworms, I thought I would put together another recommendations video. In this one, I'll be sharing a list of some of my favorite books by Indian authors. Before I get the video started, make sure to give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So I'll be starting off with one of my all-time favorite books, and if any of you follow me on Instagram, you know that I rave about this book quite a bit, and that is a Suitable Boy by Vikram Sait. Um, as you can tell, this one is very lengthy. Um, I think it's about like 1400 pages, so it'll probably take you a while to get through this, but I promise you, you will not get bored. So I dived into the world of A Suitable Boy a couple of years ago, and I was immediately immersed in the upper class society of post-independence India. So the book takes place in India in the 1950s and follows the life of Mrs. Rupa Mehta, who is seeking a suitable match for her daughter Lata, who is the novel's principal character. So be prepared to invest lots of time in this masterpiece, in my opinion, which gives the reader a very concise portrayal of the many socio-political strifes incurred in post-independence India. You'll fall in love with the characters, learn of the several social, cultural, political obstacles of rebuilding a once colonized country. And for me, I really began to appreciate the depth and richness of Indian culture. I really, really enjoyed the wide scope of narratives this book covered, which shine light on many intricate complexities of the structure of traditional Indian society and its transition into modernism in a very easy and simplistic manner. When I put the book down, I was left with a feeling of admiration for the versatile storytelling of Vikram Sait. He eloquently shifts between themes of love, class differences, caste, and social customs. And on a side note, the book was recently adapted to a TV show. I watched about two episodes and I wasn't really a big fan, mostly because I think the casting was a bit off for the characters. Okay, so the next book on my list is Gitanjali by Rabindra Tagore. So Gitanjali is actually a collection of poems by the Nobel Prize winning Rabindranath Tagore. So he was a 20th century literary and he is attributed to have transformed Bengali literature and is known around the globe for his contribution to the literary world. So personally I'm not the biggest fan of poetry because I was really interested in getting to know more of Indian literature. I wanted to read Rabindranath Tagore's work so I forced myself to understand poetry on a deeper level and the more I read it the more I actually enjoyed this form of expression. And one of the reasons I think it has touched so many hearts, it's because of its sheer ability to paint a very vivid picture of puzzling human emotions. At times, I found myself revisiting this book and rereading my favorite poems and enjoying them as if I had read them for the first time. So to all the poetry lovers out there, I would highly recommend Gitanjali. And at number three, I have The Mind of J. Krishnamurti. So I was given this book when I was quite young and I couldn't really get into it because it was a little too introspective for my little teenage mind and I picked it up a couple of years ago when I was a bit more mature and was able to get through this book and really really enjoy it. So this book is actually a biography but it's an excellent preamble to Krishnamurti's school of thought which is centered on the objective of freeing the human mind. So the book is filled with observations from Krishnamurti's contemporaries which gives the reader a broader sense of his influence and sort of a better understanding of the applicability of his teachings. I really really like this book for its discourse on various disciplines. The book spends a lot of time pondering on topics like psychology, spirituality, and philosophy. After I finished the book, I ended up spending hours on YouTube watching Krishnamurti's interviews. So I'd highly recommend doing that before picking up the book so you can get a better understanding of who he was as an individual and then go on to read his biography and see what other people had to say about him. And next on my list is Without Fear, The Life and Trial of Bhagat Singh. So this book is also a biography and I have... Oh! <laughs> I have a plane ticket in here. So I got this book on the 20th of March 2014. I actually remember getting this book at the Delhi airport. I was flying home alone from India and I had like a little bit of cash on me and I ended up spending it all on books and this was one of them and I read this on the plane because that year we had actually gone around Punjab quite a bit and dad and I actually spent a lot of time talking about Bhagat Singh and his comrades Sukhdev and Rajguru and the freedom movement. So anyways, I'm bringing it onto the channel because I like this book a lot. Overall, this book is a really, really good read, and it gave me considerable insight and background on Bhagat Singh's heroic life. 
And next on my list is The Exile by Navraj Sarna. So this book is based on the life of Maharaja Dilip Singh and he was the last Maharaja of Punjab. So most of my history background growing up revolved around Canada and I wasn't able to learn much about India's history. So I started to learn more about Indian history independently and I wanted to know more about the history of Punjab. So this book was an excellent reference for me. Through this book, I was able to learn so much about Punjab and the history of the Punjabi people and the struggles of my ancestors. So that's the end of my list. Have you guys read any of these? Do you have any other suggestions? Let me know in the comments below. And that is it from me for now, and I'll catch you guys next week with a new video. See ya!